if 3 divides 4a, then 3 divides a. Okay, now what does it mean for 3 to divide 4a? Okay, so that would have to mean that 4a would have to be equal to 3 times some integer k. Now, unfortunately, if we just divided by 3 in order to figure out what integer to use, we're ending up getting 4 thirds of an a is equal to k. So that's not going to work out very well for us. Let's look at the end. What do we need to show? We need to show that 3 divides a. So in other words, we need to show that a is equal to 3 times some integer. So again, that's not quite going to work because over here when we try to solve for the integer that we wish, we end up getting a four-thirds. A fraction is not going to be generally uh, easy to work with if we want to show that something happens to be an integer. Okay, so the direct approach seems not to be working. Let's try to take a contrapositive approach to this. Recall the contrapositive means to negate the consequent and try to prove the negation of the hypothesis or the antecedent. So if we were going to approach this by contrapositive, we would instead of assuming, or instead of trying to show that a is a multiple of 3, that 3 divides a, we would instead be assuming that 3 does not divide a. So what would that mean? Well, that would be kind of two different cases, wouldn't it? One would be that a is equal to 3 times something plus 1, right, 1 left over or a could possibly be 3k plus 2, again where k is an integer. Now in these two cases, what would happen? If these were our a's, then we could move back and to the antecedent and see that 4a would be, let's see in the first case, it would be 4 times 3k plus 1, which is 12k plus 4, which is 12k plus 3 plus 1, yep, there we go, it would be 3 times a 4k plus 1 plus a 1, but since k was an integer, we'd have that this is an integer, and so we would have 3 times something plus 1. And in the 3k plus 2 case, we'd be looking at 4a would be equal to 4 times 3k plus 2, but that's 12k plus 8, and what's that? That's 12k plus 6 plus 2, and then we can factor out a 3 again, and look at that, again we have 3 times something that looks like an integer, this time plus 2. So in both of these cases we'd have 3 not dividing into 4a, and that would prove our claim by contrapositive. So we're definitely going to take a contrapositive approach to this, or I will in the other screen. So why don't you pause the video for a second, you can keep it here on the screen if you want, and try to write up your own formal contrapositive proof of this through these two cases. And assuming you gave it a good old shot here, let's try it together. Claim. If 3 divides 4a, then 3 divides a. Proof. We will proceed by contraposition. We will proceed by contraposition. So assume that 3 does not divide a. Then there are two cases to consider. We saw them on the other screen, right? There are two cases to consider. What was case one? Well, case one was that a could possibly be equal to 3k plus 1 for some k integer. But if this were the case, if this were the case, then what would 4 times a be equal to? Well, as we saw, 4 times a would be equal to 4 times 3k plus 1, which would be equal to 12k plus 4, which is 12k plus 3 plus 1, which is 3 times 4k plus 1 plus 1 since 4k plus 1 is an integer, we see that 3 would not divide into 4a. Okay, that's fine. So then what's case 2? Well, case 2, if a were equal to not 3k plus 1, but rather 3k plus 2, 
then 4a would be equal to 4 times 3k plus 2, which would be 12k. We saw that it was plus 8, so here I'm just going to write plus 6 plus 2, because then I can write it as 3 times 4k plus 2 plus 2. And again, since What's it this time 4k plus 2 is an integer, we still have that 3 does not divide 4a. And notice that since this was a proof by contrapositive, we assumed the negation of the consequent, and we established that in the two cases that hold, the two potential cases here, in neither case we have 3 divides 4a. In other words, in both cases 3 doesn't divide 4a. So our claim follows by contrapositive.